Hi everyone. Today we have Professor Stephen Nissen with us. Professor Stephen Nissen is the Chief Academic Officer at the Heart and Vascular Institute at Cleveland Clinic and Professor of Medicine at the Lehrer College of Medicine. He previously served as President of the American College of Cardiology and co has contributed to over 600 journal articles. Thank you so much for joining us today, Professor Nissen. So, uh, you, uh, you've mentioned a couple of times that obviously this is not a substitute for statin. It really, you know, the way that you've designed your trial, it, it really is for patients that are not not tolerating statins. Um, but, you know, intuitively speaking, I'm going to be a little bit sneaky now, you know, taking it one step further, when you think of cardiovascular prevention in 10 years, 20 years, do you ever think that mempodoic acid could replace statins? I think it's not going to happen and it really shouldn't. Okay. Uh, we have so much evidence for statins. Yeah. You know, statins really are the drugs that we should always try. And in fact, we should try multiple statins. Sure. In my own practice, I'm going to try three or four statins before I will declare that a patient is statin intolerant. And you find that some patients that cannot tolerate a, a statin will yeah. tolerate an alternative statin. Yeah. And that's obviously very, very good. Yeah. One of the things we did do in the trial is we allowed people in the trial, if they can only tolerate very low doses of statins, right. below mm -hmm. the lowest approved dose. Okay. So doses like, say, five milligrams of statin twice a week. Sure. That's not an approved dose, but it does yeah. lower LDL cholesterol. And yeah. those patients could get into the trial and get additional LDL lowering from pentoic acid. Wow. So it can be used with statins, yeah. particularly uh, uh, helpful in patients that are on very low doses of statins, yeah. not enough to get the job done, uh, but we can get additional LDL lowering by adding pentoic acid. Interesting. So you actually looked at patients who were kind of taking both, but you know, less a lower dose of statin as well, as well as the ones that were only taking bempedoic acid. Yeah, that was eight um, percent of the patients that were on some very very low dose of a statin. I would be remiss if I did not point out that there were some adverse effects. Sure. Uh, there was an increased risk of gout, and yeah. we knew that before the trial that. Uh, Bampedoic acid blocks the, or rather reduces the excretion of uric acid yep. and raises serum uric acid. There was about a 1% absolute increase in the risk of gout, and there was also a 1% increased risk of gallstones, cholithiasis. Yeah. Neither of these caused a huge amount of difficulty for patients, but people should be aware of those findings. Yeah, absolutely. And so you mentioned a little bit about, you know, how your approach to it, that you would probably, as a clinician, try a couple of statins before writing a patient off as the statin intolerant. Do you have any additional advice for physicians that want to prescribe bempedoic acid? What sort of monitoring they might need to do? Anything like that? It really doesn't require any specialized monitoring. Drugs very well tolerated. Okay. There were almost no other major side, I mean, they're really not, nothing. I mean, there were no, almost no muscle related adverse effects. It was the same as placebo. Yeah. Uh, so that's a, a very good choice. I would uh, caution that for people that with have very high LDLs, okay. ACSK9 inhibitors are also well tolerated and okay. produce somewhat larger LDL reductions on the order of around 50%. Yeah. We had an LDL reduction of about 22% with pentoic acid. So if patients need very substantial LDL reduction, then PCSK9 inhibitors are a good choice. If they yeah. need moderate reduction, then pentoic acid, because it's oral, easy to take, yeah. represents an advantageous strategy. Yeah, absolutely. And so you've, you, you know, the studies made a really good case for bempedoic acid, I think, for statin intolerant patients. But is there any further research you would like to see in this field or anything that, you know, any pieces of evidence that you still might be missing? Well, I think there is one other thing that everybody needs to know yeah. is bempedoic acid is available in two forms. Yeah. 
uh, as bempedoic acid alone and as bempedoic acid in combination with azetamide. Mm -hmm. We did not study the combination drug because the FDA wanted to know what bempedoic acid did given alone. Yeah, right. But in clinical practice, that combination can lower LDL in the range of 37 to 40 percent. Okay. And that's about as much as a moderate intensity statin. Yeah. And so for a patient that has a moderate LDL elevation, where we really want to get a reduction that's in the range of a moderate intensity statin, but in whom patients can't tolerate the statin, yeah. then that combination product of bempedoic acid plus azetamide is a really useful tool. Yeah, okay. And so the combination drug may, may need to be studied a bit further because you only did the... Yeah. the I yeah. don't think anyone's going to do a 14,000 patient outcome trial again with this. No. <laughs> and thir over 32 countries as well, your trial. That is very, you know, impressive. 1,250 sites around the world. Absolutely. And I just want to talk a little bit about sort of number needed to treat and potentially cost because, you know, statins, there are a, a couple of bots maybe, but as I yeah. understand, there's no generic form of bempedoic acid yet. And so it can be quite expensive, a few hundred dollars. What does that mean in terms of cost effectiveness for, you know, healthcare organizations or health maintenance organizations? Well, there is a cost effectiveness analysis underway. It will be published okay. eventually. Uh, I think it'll be very informative. Remember that we were avoiding a lot of coronary vascularizations, yeah. a lot of myocardial infarctions, and yeah. those are costly. Yeah. So there, it is balanced. But you're right. That's why statins should be the first line drugs. Yeah. Tempidoic acid is more expensive. It depends on the country in which you live. Mm -hmm. Drugs are always more expensive in the United States because we do our very best to make our patients pay as much as possible in America. Uh, it's an unfortunate situation. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, hopefully now with evidence for a cardiovascular benefit, third party payers are going to be more willing to pay for benefit yeah. acid and the patient's co-pays will be relatively modest. Yeah. Great. And so one final question. Um, was there anything about the trial that really surprised you that you didn't expect at all? Well, yeah, the biggest surprise was the fact that we actually were able to get complete vital status in almost 100% of the patients mm -hmm. and complete data through the end of the trial in more than 95% of the patients in the middle of the worst pandemic in our lifetime. And so I'm very proud of the team that worked on the trial to be able, we, I didn't think we could achieve those levels of, of data, that level of data quality yeah. in the really bad circumstances. And when everything was all done, yeah. we really were able by having a lot of innovation in the trial to yeah. keep people in the study and to get the endpoints uh, from almost everybody. Wow, I, f I feel like that could be a, a different interview completely on its own, you know, H how to organize the trial and make in the middle of a pandemic and make sure that you get 100% of the data. But um, unfortunately, we I think we have to wrap it up there. Um, I know you have exciting things along the way as well. Um, so I'm really looking forward to, you know, hearing about your research in the future. And thank you so much for being on this interview today. My pleasure and nice uh, talking with you.